On Dragon's Den or generally? Yeah, oh, on Dragon's Den. Just so, on Dragon, so on Dragon's Den, the best pitch, I think, was the, the one that we lost my name pitch because it was just clean, simple. They, they thought about it. They'd obviously had some sort of schooling and they knew how to pitch something. It was yeah. very simple. What's the proposition? What's the hypothesis? What are we going to do? How are we going to make money? Boom. Done. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Um, and, and you just and, knew straight away. And, and I knew they could throw in a bit about, there's a VC fund that's done a bit of due diligence. That gives you a bit of a sort of a risk cap. You think, okay, well, yeah. I don't need to get too much work there. Then there's the other extreme. This is a chap called, uh, he had a company called Barthematic. He walks in and goes, right, what I've got is an amazing product. It's a load of computers and valves and systems. And he gave me this, um, this device that he's created, which is a control mechanism, which basically is a bit of perspex with some buttons glued onto it. It wasn't, there was no even electronics in it. It didn't even turn. It's glued some buttons on a, on a tile. And I thought, right, okay, well, that's, that's a mock-up. He's going, oh, no, that's, that's the MVP. I was like, no, <laughs> that's a mock-up. Well, what does it do? What it does is it fills your bath up to a level that you want to have your bath at. And if you want some oil or some scents, it'll drop a few drops in your bath. And I'm like, right, okay. So how much is that going to cost? About 15 grand or something stupid. I said, right, well, what do you want? I want 2 million quid. I can't remember the numbers exactly. Is that 2 million quid for like 10% or something? And I'm like, right. And what the hell are you going to do with 2 million quid? Well, not only for the product, what we really need is a marketing suite in the shard. <laughs> and you're like... I look at producers like, is this like, it's awesome. so, so, so taking a mitt here. Yeah. And they're like, no, 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 no we're, we're out. But what's interesting, and you've probably seen this, is that you know, there's lots of stories of entrepreneurs. There's the, there's the, uh, the biotech company recently that invested, raised billions and went, was basically a scam. Yeah. That if you've got somebody who's got the ability to pitch well, get people to believe in them, a lot of people raise quite a lot of money for nonsense. Well, that, I was just going to say, they could, the <laughs> or, best thing, or even frauds. The best thing they could be good, good at is the pitching itself. Because hmm. I've, for example, um, I'm sure you've done lots of interviews in the past, and we've got quite a lot of staff. And sometimes I look at people and I go, "You're just bloody good at being interviewed, but probably not that good yeah, at doing the job." Not looking at me. So yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, so, so you must see these people who are great pitch artists, but maybe not so good at the business I mean, behind it. How do you? Well, How do you work that out? I work in tech quite a lot. So you see a lot of people that are super intelligent, got great ideas, they understand the technology, maybe not perhaps the market, but they've come up with something which, you know, you can see the potential for. But they're incapable of communicating oh, that. That's the question I wanted to ask. Yeah. Incapable of communicating Because you've got to see person. beyond that. You've yeah. got to see someone who's a great pitcher, but are they just a great pitcher? Someone who's got a great idea, but they're terrible at pitching it. Because yeah. I, I interviewed Theo Pafitas a few yeah, yeah. weeks back for, for my podcast. And he went at me on this. I told him that I was getting into like a drones business and he went at me, he went, question, 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 yeah. question. And I just panicked. I mean, it's my I'm just doing a podcast there. Yeah. And, like, and I could imagine, and I sort of almost saw myself in the den and a lot of people watched that. I went, geez, Robbie went for you. He was probably just trying to get to the, the nub of it. But I sort of, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, even though I did know. Yeah. So, sorry to sort of yeah, jump yeah. on what you're saying, but basically, <clears throat> yeah. How do you work out, okay, they're a good picture, but maybe the business is not good behind it. I actually think that's a good product and I like them, even though their pitch was shit. You've got to go through all that minefield, haven't you? Well, often in, I've done tech uh, out of universities and, you know, and with sort of PhDs, really. And you can see the potential in the product, but you've got to build a team around them. Yeah. Because quite often, there's, there's a few examples. Um, Sir Mike Lynch, you know, he was, he's a very technical chap. Yeah. He bought quite a big business, clearly. Um, but often you've got to look at that person and say i might not even like you actually in some cases you're just an absolute genius and you created you know the google algorithm yeah. so that's good self-awareness. i've got to create something around you I put most a people would you. not be able to put money into something to someone they didn't really like i think that is really good self-awareness to be able to make a decision based on doing something with someone you don't necessarily like but the problem you've got is getting them to understand that so they've got an idea i want to build a business you're saying i get it you're not the right person to run the business. Right, you might yeah. be the right person to go and talk at a technical conference, but you, you're not a people person. Because right. often in tech companies, you've got to try and get very good people to leave their jobs and join your business. You've yeah. got to be a leader. You've got to have some personality, a bit of charisma. Right. And if you haven't got that, sometimes it's quite hard to tell somebody that. Yeah. I get some more as well. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, because I see a lot of people just generally, oh, I never do any, any business with anyone I don't like, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that. They look at them, they don't like the way they look, they don't like the way they dress. And I think actually, maybe you should be a bit more open-minded at that and forget whether you like them or don't like them because that's your own prejudgment and just figure out what they're good at and what they're not good at. So again, going back to pitching and business, so it depends where you are in the life cycle of a business. So if you're a startup, literally you're going to be sat in a room together, literally in a bedroom almost, or your kitchen table. You've got to be able to get on and work together. Yeah. If you're buying out a utility company with 100 years of cash flows and you can understand the regulatory framework and the demand schedule where it's going to go, it doesn't really matter if the whole management team disappears like a puff of smoke the right. day after you close your investment deal. Because you're not you're looking at the fundamentals of the business, clearly the CEOs makes a difference, but it doesn't make as much of a difference as if in your tiny startup, your management team all decide one day to go and join a kibbutz. Yeah. So you've got a problem. And there's everything in the middle of those two. Or go and sit on the toilet. Or go and sit on the yeah. toilet. Yeah. Exactly. Or lock myself in the bog. So, and there's, and there's everything between those two in terms of your management team is, do you need to get on with them? Yeah. Do they need to, are they fully rounded? Do you need to um, build on that team with different skill sets and yeah. put people in? You know, you see investment funds often put in uh, non-execs or chairs that understand the industry. Mm. So it's partly governance. It's partly expertise, partly mentoring, but yeah. the institutions kind of do that in an institutional way. Yeah. Okay. What are the commonalities of the worst pitches you've seen? Like if you could say the top three things that you see all the time that you just <clears throat> shudder at. So one is they haven't done the homework. Right. So they pitch something to you so that you're not, you're not interested in. Like right. someone pitch, oh, people pitch me all the time and say, right, what I've got is, I don't come from a random idea. Um, the property is a good example. I don't really do property. Probably I should. Talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I won't pitch I'm sure you, you can help yeah. me. But you know, it'd be something that I'm just not interested in. Wind farms, yeah. good one. Um, it's like if you do your homework, you can work out, broadly speaking, mm. what I'm interested in. There's no point handing me on social media or email to try yeah. and get me to do something that I've just got no interest in or expertise in whatsoever. Yeah. So often people haven't done their homework. Mm -hmm. And the worst case is always when they, people, I don't care if someone's nervous. I don't, if I can just then it's TV, right? You don't care if someone's nervous. You don't I guess care. You can see through that. You don't you? care if someone doesn't really know the numbers particularly well. You can yeah. do. You can go around that and follow up later and do due yeah. diligence. You can't on TV because they're standing in front of you. You don't really care about that stuff. But if they pitch to you and you do not understand the core proposition of why, what's the product, who's the customer, why they're going to buy it, for example, or who they are, and it hasn't been communicated, that's a terrible pitch. Yeah. And that's very very hard to come back from. Yeah. Do you see on the Dragon's Den a few times, you know, the clashes, the personalities that get a bit argumentative or whatever. Is that just sort of TV fluffery or does that happen quite a lot? No, the so Dragon's Den is quite interesting. So I, I think Dragon's Den is the business, as you know, is hard to make, make televisual. Yeah. So Dragon's Den, I, I still believe, is it's the best representation of business on TV, although it's very much early stage startups and angel investment. Yeah. Because, you know, what would happen on Dragon's Den is somebody would be on TV and they maybe start crying or we'd catch them out on their P&L or didn't understand what their gross profit margin was. And then we say, oh, we're out. So everyone goes, well, the Dragons didn't invest because, you know, Brian or Melanie didn't understand his numbers. And he'd be like, well, no, we didn't invest because they're actually asking us to invest using a convertible instrument in a subsidiary of a Canadian um, licensing or royalty-based business or franchise. Yeah. Now that is not TV. You just switch off and go, course, and, watch, yeah. go and watch Gogglebox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you just switch off. It's too, yeah. too boring, too complicated, too legal. Yeah. You wouldn't understand that. So what they have to do on Dragon's Den is find within, you know, sort of almost sort of the journalistic credibility in a way, yeah. is find a storyline that kind of works and they follow that storyline. Mm. So it's real. There's no prepping. You don't know who they are. When I was on Dragon's Den, literally I turned up there and was like, hello, hello, hello. Sit in a chair, bit of makeup, but yeah. because I needed it. <laughs> bit of makeup, boom, they come out. That's right, it. Yeah. Off you go. Yeah. That was it. So yeah. that's real. And I think that I still think that, and I'm working on this myself actually, we'll talk about it separately, is about it needs to be moved social media though. It needs to move to social media. There's got to be a way of because of the nature and the power of the internet and democratizing this stuff, got to be a way of creating a slightly different format, if that's the right word, of that experience yeah. and bringing it together right. and doing it, doing it online.